All right, ladies and gentlemen, tribe members and guests. I want to talk about a few things. I want to talk about self-awareness in relation to your lifestyle. And I want to give you three solutions on how to change your lifestyle just a little bit to start getting you more of what you want, to start making some real change. You know I'm about change, right? Anybody who knows me, I talk about change all the time. So let's make some change. So self-awareness, right? Self-awareness is the first step to any type of personal development, to any mindset change, right? To any type of growth that is gonna lead to overall success, right? We need self-awareness. Where are you at and what are you doing that's getting you what you're doing, right? That's getting you where you're at, right? So I'll use a map as an example. Now you look at a map and you say, I wanna get here on the map. If you don't have your current location, that map is useless, right? That's the importance of self-awareness. Self-awareness allows you to identify your current location, whether that be mentally, physically, or whatever the case is, right? Now, we're gonna talk about self-awareness today in relation to your lifestyle. You are a manifestation of your lifestyle. And understand your lifestyle is the entire sum of all of your consistent behaviors, right? So whatever you do on a consistent basis, daily, weekly, monthly, annually, that manifests who you are, right? Where you're at. So you're not obese or overweight because every once in a while you eat a, a fattening meal or an unhealthy meal. Just like you're not gonna get in shape by eating healthy every once in a while or working out every once in a while, right? It's gotta be a lifestyle. That's the only way you make any change is you have to change your lifestyle first. Ooh, excuses, right? So this is the one thing that's gonna hold us back from a lot of good, right, is excuses. We got tons of them, right? I hear them all the time as a coach, excuses, right? And people fall victim to their excuses all the time. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to address three of the most common excuses that I hear. And I like three because I operate on three pillars, right? training, nutrition, and personal development. So we're gonna start with training. What's the number one training excuse? I wanna get in the gym and be more consistent and follow a program, but I, I just don't have the time. I don't, I don't, I don't, I just don't have the time. I'm so busy, right? We're all busy. I've known single mothers with multiple kids and they're in the gym consistently all the time and they're in shape, they look phenomenal, right? 50 years old looking better than women in, the, in their mid 20s. I'm telling you, right? So. You have time, it just really depends on your priorities, right? So when you wanna make time, you gotta do two things. You gotta analyze your priorities. You gotta make a list of your priorities. What is the most important things in your life right now? Okay, and your goals should be up there. So take a look at your goals and put that into the list of your priorities. Now what I want you to do is I want you to make a schedule, okay? Make a schedule where you you fill out your schedule according to your priorities. And whatever's most important on your list of priorities, that's what's gonna go first in the schedule. And you fill everything in afterwards. So if something like training to get in shape is a high priority for you, there's no way you're not gonna be able to fit that into the schedule. All right, so moving on to nutrition. What's the biggest nutrition excuse I hear? And it is always, I, I know what to eat. It's just that when I'm out and I'm hungry, I just eat whatever's the closest thing. Because I don't feel like going home and cooking and doing all of this. Like, I want food now when I'm hungry. I don't want to be cooking when I'm hungry. Well, let's make a lifestyle change to get over that, right? And that would be meal prepping and meal packing, right? So you take two days out of the week and you prep some meals for the next three to four days. So let's say you meal prep on Wednesday or Tuesday and you prep for the next three days, right? And then probably you end up on a, su a, a Sunday afternoon, Sunday night, maybe a Saturday afternoon, whatever the case is, and you prep for the next three to four days after that. It's seven days in a week, so if you prep days in advance, you're good, right? So you can have two apples, a grapefruit, and a half a cup of cashews. That's meal number one. Meal number two, a half a cup of steamed rice, or, well, boiled rice, whatever, and some lentils or beans, right? That's meal number two. You can cook these things and you can just go like that, 
right? 15, 10 minutes, bam, you can prep like two meals at the same time, right? If you got four burners on your stove, you can do it. And so really, this doesn't take a whole lot of time. What it takes is discipline. Again, schedule. So you schedule your training. You schedule, obviously, you got to go to work, right? You schedule your meal prepping. You schedule your bedtimes and all of that type of stuff. That becomes your lifestyle. You see where this goes. You make those lifestyle changes, they result in changes in you personally. All right, so the next and final is going to be a mindset excuse, a mindset issue, right? And that is the excuse of, I just lack the motivation, right? Now I get it. We turn on the TV, we, love, we watch the news, we're bombarded with all the bad news and information. This one's doing that one, cutting this and cutting that. Right, we, we, we get our bills, we struggle with bills, our work, our job stresses us out, we're working crazy hours, we're struggling to lose weight and get a hold of our lives, we've been struggling with weight our whole entire life, all types of stuff. Looking in the mirror, seeing what you don't like and all of this type of stuff and you know, just being bombarded with the negativity of other people. So many things we have to deal with, right? On a consistent basis, it can really wear you out. I hear you. And so, and I, I'm not exempt from that either. And so what we have to do is we need something to counteract all of that. Because all of that negativity, it really damages us to the point where it's hard to stay motivated. So we need some positive reinforcement. And so one thing that I've found to work is gratitude, right? Practicing with intent, gratitude, being grateful. So one thing I would invite you to do is make a list so you can have a a list of your opportunities then you have a list of the things you're grateful for and then make a list of the things that you're taking for granted and be honest with yourself about these things right we got to be honest with this because it's the only way we move forward we all got to do this right and it's very easy to to take things for granted we take our lives for granted we take everything for granted our family members and, and everything our, everything we take it for granted it's so easy because you're so used to having these things and you think they're always going to be around right so and i'm gonna give you an example of this we've all seen it the guy in the gym all he does is upper body he's just all the time he's in the mirror he's flexing he's working his arms he's either benching or he's doing lat pull downs or bicep curls but he doesn't train legs and so you say, yo, man, why, well, how come you never train your legs? This is because I, I hate training legs. It's difficult. My hamstrings are tight, this and that, blah, 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 right? It hurts. So he doesn't do it. That's not showing appreciation, right? That's not showing gratitude. Because some people, they can't get out of the chair to do legs. They can't walk. You've been on Facebook, Instagram, whatever the case is. You see the inspiring videos of the guy. He's got no legs, but he's bench pressing. Right? Or the person with one arm and they're doing one arm pull-ups. Right? You get to do these things as a person like that, missing these limbs because you're grateful for the limbs you do have that you get to work. Right? Because everything in our lives, our lives in general, is not something that we have to do. You don't have to go to work. You don't have to pay your bills. You don't have to eat healthy. You don't have to, you don't have to live. It's an opportunity. Right? And so... When you practice gratitude for the opportunity of life, now you are able to get more out of life because your mindset is conducive to that and your lifestyle changes because of that gratitude. Ladies and gentlemen, that is my time and I will see you in the next video.